Welcome to Mona Tutorials. In this session, we will be looking at creating an optimized asset to bake the high polygon asset detail onto. First, we will look at recycling the assets already created. Then we will look at the same approach, just using retopology. And then we will look at other approaches such as duplicate assets to save on resources. Let's jump in. With the high poly asset made and looking great, we can start looking at the optimization process. Here is an example of the end result. Note how the poly count is considerably lower than the high polygon model displayed previously. Once again, this is extremely important when creating assets to be used on any platform, such as mobile, standalone VR or XR, or WebGL. In this assets case, I used two different approaches, and kind of a mix of the two. I reused previous assets, such as the high polygon asset, and optimized the original mesh after removing the bevel and subdivision modifiers. I had to go over the entire asset manually to remove all the edge loops that I added to sharpen bevel data. This is faster, as the main model is already made, but perhaps less optimized. The main method in this case was to optimize the original mesh after removing the bevel and subdivision modifiers. I had to go over the entire asset manually to remove all of the edge loops I added to sharpen bevel data. This is faster, as the main model is already made, perhaps less optimized. It's pretty easy to miss polygons that could be removed, or not to be as optimized as manual retopology. The most common element of this is simply selecting the edges that you want to remove and using delete dissolve edges. This removes the edges from the mesh, but keeps the faces in place when possible. There are faster ways to optimize an asset that are not nearly as optimized, such as remeshing or decimation. These approaches are actually pretty bad at hard surface modeling assets, so I wouldn't use them even if I did want to make it quickly. Another key element is that if you are editing the asset yourself, decimation makes it extremely difficult to edit the asset, as there are no edge loops to work with. They are also not very good for assets that require rigging, like characters, as the edge loops around the object play a significant role in creating good animations. Shoulders, elbows, and knees are good examples of this. As with the hard surface time-lapse, I will keep the time-lapse running at 10 speed and start the commentary in the next section, so feel free to watch through or skip using the markers below.
The second approach would be to start tracing or retopologizing the asset manually, considering each and every polygon. This is slower, but significantly more optimized. This is the better approach if you were designing for low-end devices such as mobile, standalone VR or XR, and WebGL. Retopology is actually pretty easy though, it just takes time. The results are usually worth the result, however, and of course, with more experience, the faster you can get at the process. This is basically done with the snap tool enabled with the face setting selected. Use the standard sub-D modeling tools such as extrude, knife, and add edge loop with the snap tool on to rebuild a low poly asset over the top of the high poly asset with as few polygons as possible. A common consideration is building more to the silhouette as a lot of the detail can be baked into the normal map. I use this as a key idea when creating my low poly asset alongside baking considerations. You can find out more about retopology considerations in a workshop going over the detail in the description below.
I've separated some of the assets, such as the thruster, the single rear window cover slat, and a small detail I can duplicate underneath the car. I separated these in order to help bake the assets without other elements getting in the way. I can duplicate the thruster onto all four wheel slots, and duplicate the window cover and edit their size to the window, and the undersigned detail a number of times. This will not only save time, but also increase the size of the assets in the texture resulting in higher quality results. Note that any duplicate asset should not have any very clear detail that makes them look duplicates instantly. Unique dirt and damage features will look very obvious in these cases, so be careful with how you texture the assets accordingly. Once I have created all the assets, I need to get a final poly count considering the duplicate elements. The total comes to 7034 triangles, which is a significant improvement from 769,352. In this video we looked at different approaches to create an optimized asset that we can then bake our high polygon asset onto. In the next video we look at unwrapping UVs or telling our 3D model where the 2D texture needs to go. Thanks for watching and happy building.